tonight, the Stig drives some very fast farm equipment, I hail a taxi, and finishing with something that I'm reliably informed is a bit of a fan favourite around here. I'm Chris Harris, and this is the Top Gear Horizon Special. Ah, yes, the Stig, our very own UFO, unidentified fast object, the world's least obedient racing driver. Right then, the Lotus Elise, a 90s classic based on the age-old roadster recipe. Two seats, engine in the middle, rear-wheel drive. Not an ounce of fat. This is what... Driving is all about. Yes, that's it. The honourable art of drifting. This isn't just any Elise, it's a Sport 190, a tuned up, stripped out Elise for track days. Even the passenger seat is an optional extra. But who needs friends anyway? Friends are expensive and heavy. It weighs well under 700 kilos and makes 190 horsepower from its 1.8 litre engine, which drifts to 8,000 RPM. Just listen to that. philosophy of the man who founded the company, Colin Chapman. Simplify, then add lightness, he said. The Sport 190 also adds a full roll cage, just in case. All right, it's not the fastest way around a corner, but it's definitely the most entertaining. The Series 1 Elise is, after all, one of the best handling cars ever made. The Sport 190 is its hardcore cousin, a road-going racer you can drive to work and across fields, it turns out. But if it's true agricultural transport you're after, we have just the thing. I'm Chris Harris, and this is the Top Gear Horizon Special. Ah, yes, the Stig, our very own UFO, unidentified fast object, the world's least obedient racing driver. Right then, the Lotus Elise, a 90s classic based on the age-old Roadster recipe. Two seats, engine in the middle, rear-wheel drive. Not an ounce of fat. This is what driving is all about. You've got it. The trick with drifting is to not actually spin, but to almost spin for as long as possible. But this isn't just any Elise, it's a Sport 190, a tuned up, stripped out Elise for track days. Even the passenger seat is an optional extra, but who needs friends anyway? Friends are expensive and heavy. All right, it's not the fastest way around a corner, but it's definitely the most entertaining. Yes, that's it. The honourable art of drifting. It weighs well under 700 kilos and makes 190 horsepower from its 1.8 litre engine, 
which lift to 8,000 RPM. Just listen to that. A serious slide there. Loving your work, Stiggy. Of course, because it's a Lotus, it sticks to the famous philosophy of the man who founded the company, Colin Chapman. Simplify, then add lightness, he said. The Sport 190 also adds a full roll cage, just in case. Completely sideways now. Making it look easy, too. Out. The Series 1 Elise is, after all, one of the best handling cars ever made. The Sport 190 is its hardcore cousin, a road-going racer you can drive to work and across fields, it turns out. But if it's true agricultural transport you're after, we have just the thing. Continue. We are able to select chapter and stuff as well. Oh, a BMW 1M. Great car. Hang on. That's my BMW 1M. You're Seriously, not funny. Who gave Stick the keys? I mean, I literally just cleaned it. Now it's going to smell of onions. Oh, the stick. It's electronically restrained to 155 miles an hour, but it could definitely go quicker. Three litre straight six, 335 horsepower, two turbos, as much sideways action as you like. That's the last time we leave Stig unattended. Am I the only one who remembers Budapest? Does 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. My 1M. Stig's way beyond that now. Look at the smoke! Please leave me some tread for the drive home, Stiggy. Seriously, come on! It's a BMW, so of course it's rear-wheel drive. 50, 50. 50 weight distribution too. It's a natural-born drifter. Watch. Not at 
错。BMW's ever made this, born to be driven by yeah. me. Got to admit, the stick does kind of suit it. Bring it Why back around. Let's have another crack at this. No, I gotta redo this whole freaking thing again. Like freaking 40 hours. Ugh, that's 5.2 miles. Such a long drive. Seriously. Not funny. Who gave Stick the keys? I mean, I literally just cleaned it. Now it's going to smell of onions. Oh, the Stick. Well, this is stressful to watch. Not at all. Turn right. Three litre straight six, 335 horsepower, two turbos. As much sideways action as you like. Tell me I need 200 yards. Turn left. Turn left. Smoke! Please leave me some tread for the drive home, Stiggy. Seriously, come on! That's the last time we leave Stig unattended. Am I the only one who remembers Budapest? Oh, restrained to 155 miles an hour, but it could definitely go quicker. So of course it's rear wheel drive. 50-50 weight distribution too. It's a natural born drifter. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Oh, we'll have to deal with that, Mr. Chris Harrison. And uh, find the curbs. Now, anyone else want to go? No? 
Don't swear I didn't ask. Right. Back to the actual script now, if you don't mind. This is Top Gear's track tour. It's a tractor, obviously, but with a 5.7-litre Chevy V8 making 500 horsepower. And here comes the Stig again. Farm Dang. Stig. Born in a barn, they say. Weaned by pigs. Can plough a field in under six seconds. There's a speed camera on the M68. Rumour has it, it only flashes above 87.2 miles an hour. Our tractor has been officially clocked at 87.2 miles an hour, making it the world's fastest tractor. But I reckon it'll go even faster. Tires, remember? They get a bit squishy through the corners. Nobody needs to get the harvest in that quickly. Wow. Right, here comes the speed camera. Hope they put some film in it. Have you ever seen anything like it? That's a new tractor oh, speed record and some impressively fast farming. If you want to spread slurry in a hurry, you know what you need. Now, though, it's time to hail a ride in something completely different. Next chapter. Here we go. I called a cab earlier. Local company, Aisha's Taxis. Excellent service. Got me here in no time. Unsurprising, really. I mean, look at what turned up. Hands down, the quickest cab I've ever been in. Which got me thinking, how fast could this thing actually go? So I had a word with Aisha, asked if we could borrow her cab for a trip to the seaside. To Bambara Beach, in fact, where we could stretch the taxi's legs a bit. Although, I might have forgotten to tell her who'd be driving. You've guessed it, the cabbie who'll always get you to your destination very early, but probably won't be anywhere near where you asked to go. Those tires must be worn now. Surprised they're still in one piece, to be honest. Turn left. That's what I call a cab. No clattery diesel engine here. This has a V12 with over 750 horsepower, plus bucket seats. Oh, Beaded bucket seats, presumably. say all cabs should have wide bodies and flared arches. Think about it. More stability, more speed, more downforce, more room for your terrified passengers. Just goes to show, you can slide almost anything if you know how, even a taxi.
has slick tyres for maximum grip on a bone-dry drag strip, so they should be interesting when we hit the beach. days daredevils used smooth sandy beaches like this to see how fast their cars could go many early land speed records were set on beaches miles of space nothing to hit sounds easy right oh look at that laying some pretty squirmy tracks there sticky that's what happens with 750 horsepower on sand but that's the challenge here Go as fast as possible all the way to the top of the beach. The thing is, there's something I haven't told the stick. Speed record rules say you must do two... one in each direction before the clock runs out. Which means, Stiggy, pulling off the world's swiftest U-turn, which, of course, is when the handbrake comes in handy. I knew it. Star ride from the stick there. Mini cab, maximum speed. Next time I need a ride to the airport, I know who I'm calling. And all of this off road action has given me an idea. Guys, I say we head on to the next chapter. Oh. This is Project EAT. That's EAT for E-Class All-Terrain. It's a modified Merc built by the Top Gear magazine team for finding bears in the woods. Not many bears around here, though. Mostly badgers. Still, there's definitely some terrain. Lots of it. All you need is a good sense of direction. Or not. Here's Stig again, looking lost. 
terrified of maps, apparently. Inner compass points directly south. The EAT has a silky smooth V6 diesel. It'll do 155 miles an hour on the road, but where we're going, we won't need roads. First up, it's a trip to the top of Glen Rannoch, by any means necessary, and against the clock, naturally. But don't worry, it has knobbly tyres, and a roof rack for carrying extra knobbly tyres. In 400 yards, turn left. Turn left. says you need an SUV to go off-road. The EAT has four-wheel drive and air suspension to smooth out lumps and bumps and everyday obstacles. Ancient burial mounds, for example. Yards. Turn sharp left. That's some proper hang time. Actual air suspension. Well, it is a Mercedes wagon, so it's tough. And if you really want to smash stuff up, there's even a pickaxe in the back. In 100 yards, turn left. completely sideways. You'd do well in rallying with skills like that. Top draw drifting, I reckon. Turn sharp left. It also has 340 horsepower, more torque than a cruise ship, and gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. Turn right. to head way over there, to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up must come down. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Recalculating route. Watch out here. I bet nobody checked the train timetable. Does anybody check the train timetables anymore? We are going to have to gun it all the way up there. I don't know. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Full of home comforts, the EAT charges for almost anything you can charge. Cozy ambient lighting, even a portable espresso machine. Everything the intrepid explorer could ever need. At the 
the roundabout, take the first exit. In 400 yards, turn right. Turn right. All right, all this adventure kits had a tiny effect on the fuel efficiency. Good job the roof rack holds two cans of diesel, and there's another one in the back. Just don't confuse them with your drinking water. Final stretch now, just the small matter of getting up Arthur's seat. The clock's ticking, so better step on it, Stiggy. In 200 yards, turn left. Turn left. And there we go, the top of Arthur's seat. No idea who Arthur is, by the way, or why his seat's so big. Nice view, though. Shame there's no time to stick around. You just gotta go. The EAT has a silky smooth V6 diesel. It'll do 155 miles an hour on the road, but where we're going, we won't need roads. First up, it's a trip to the top of Glen Rannoch by any means necessary and against the clock, naturally. But don't worry, it has knobbly tyres and a roof rack for carrying extra knobbly tyres. In 400 yards, turn left. Turn left. drive car on mud tires completely sideways you'd do well in rallying with skills like that top draw drifting i reckon who says you need an suv to go off-road the eat has four-wheel drive and air suspension to smooth out lumps and bumps and everyday obstacles ancient burial mounds for example yards. Turn sharp left. Turn sharp left. In 200 yards, turn right. Turn right. In 200 yards, turn left. Turn left. In 400 yards, turn sharp left. Alrighty guys, let's go. Expect a couple videos to be coming out today, guys, because, um... And he was visiting... In 200 yards, turn sharp left. Turn sharp left. It also has 340 horsepower, more torque than a cruise ship, and gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. Turn right.
some proper hang time. Actual air suspension. Now it's time to head way over there to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up must come down. safe to do so. Recalculating route. Well, it is a Mercedes wagon, so it's tough. And if you really want to smash stuff up, there's even a pickaxe in the back. Yeah, Home comforts, the EAT, charges for almost anything you can charge. Cozy ambient lighting, even a portable espresso machine. Everything the intrepid explorer could ever need. At the roundabout, take the first exit. I don't know why I just had to... At the roundabout, take the first exit. In 400 yards, turn right. Turn right. All right, all this adventure kits had a tiny effect on the fuel efficiency. Good job the roof rack holds two cans of diesel, and there's another one in the back. Just don't confuse them with your drinking water. Take the first exit. On the final stretch now. Just the small matter of getting up Arthur's seat. The clock's ticking, so better step on it, Stiggy. Two hundred yards. Turn left. And there we go, the top of Arthur's seat. Oh. No idea who Arthur yeah, is, by the way, or why his seat's so big. Nice view, though. Shame there's no time to stick around. Uh. Okay, guys, this video is way too long right now. Okay then, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys. Pull up, pull up in the gold, I'm leading. But I'm on the money feeding. I don't want to go bomb B. Them, I don't know what I do when I go from B. Leading the pack in black.